Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Seditionists. I am here with my longtime best buddy, Keith Reeves. And um, I think this might be our first video post-election. So we uh, obviously want to take some time and talk about the potentially new Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos. Um, obviously, uh -huh. I, I would say I don't think that any of you will be surprised that, that Keith and I are a bit concerned about this choice of person. Um, but let's, let's try to remain um, open-minded and, and think for a minute about the idea of it seems like every time you read something about Betsy DeVos, you hear about her being a proponent of school choice, voucher systems, charter schools, those type of things. Um, here, here is my one my one biggest problem with any time anybody says anything about school choice, voucher systems, uh, charter schools, private schools, and all that type of thing. My problem is this. If those schools have the magic bean, why aren't they sharing it with everybody? So if you are telling a parent, you can choose to go to this school instead of that school, why, what, what are they getting from that? What's the benefit? My, my personal opinion is corporate America and greed, but we'll get into that whole thing in a moment here. But I, I hear so many people saying they're, it's going to be better if they go to the charter school. It's going to be better if they go to this other school. But, but what's the magic bean? Well, what do they have over there that, 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 that they're not sharing with public education because somehow this is a better choice? My second concern is that it's going to end up becoming a segregated society where, where the rich and the ones that can afford to go to the private schools and take their little bit of voucher money and go to these corporate America schools where they're going to be uh, giving money back to the big businesses, we're going to create this, this, this division even more so than you would even see now between urban and suburban schools. That's my thing. Keith, what's your thoughts? Well, yes. <laughs> um, Beyond the fact that there's a primer, I just looked, it's page 212 in this, if you want a primer. And um, if you haven't read uh, Diane Ravitch's uh, Reign of Error, another really good primer on this. Um, beyond the obvious philosophical concerns and potential social structural concerns that we have evidence to validate your positions, Rob, here's my big thing that just really frosts my cupcakes when it comes to advocates for vouchers and school choice. It doesn't work. This is not an opinion. I don't do opinion. How many more times do people have to watch us before you recognize that we don't just throw crap out there because we think that it's a good idea? Rob and I are research-based practitioners. If school choice and vouchers meaningfully impacted and benefited children, I would be behind it because I'm behind anything that's good for children, but it isn't. It isn't, and the data says so. It doesn't say so a little bit. There's not, the, 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 the jury is still out. We're not sure if humans influence the climate. I'm sorry, I don't have time for idiocy. So we have to come to consensus and understand what all of the research community tells us. And it tells us the same thing about climate change, that it's real, as it does about school choice. It doesn't work. Vouchers and school choice have been found to decrease performance in some areas and don't change it in all the others. The totality of the evidence and the research, and I'm not going to cite specific things here because I don't have that off the top of my head. I'm still drinking my coffee, but we'll, we'll put some links and we'll get those to you. But if you're serious about education, a basic Google will take you to use Google Scholar, by the way. It will take you to the research and it is overwhelmingly consistent. You cannot apply a free market based supply and demand business mentality to public education. We tried it, they screwed it, it doesn't work. That's for me the overarching bottom line. I understand the desire, we don't want kids to be in failing school, fine. 
We don't want kids to continue to languish in structural and institutional violence. Agreed. For the record, the people who are the uh, uh, proponents of solving those problems are the people who usually caused it in the first place by maintaining the status quo in these structural violent institutions. But you can't fix schools and you can't improve learning outcomes for children through school choice. It just doesn't work. And why would we spend all that time implementing this whole concept of school choice when they could use that money and time to make the, the, the public schools better. It just seems like a colossal waste of time. Um, it is. Here are two other things that really have been sort of freaking me out lately. Um, just like you said, uh, we, we do base our, our comments on as much research and data as we can get our hands on. Um, but I'm noticing now nationwide, maybe even more, maybe even internationally, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, That's right. It's to the point now where facts are, are no longer important. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, You're totally right about that. I, I, I could show you absolutely concrete that two plus two equals four, and there are people out there that are looking at it and go, eh, no, I don't think so. That's true. <laughs> and yep. it's, it's really scary because how, how are you to debate and argue like you and I want to do? We want to debate what's best for kids whenever they've literally padlocked our hands because – they don't we can we can cite research and data and this that and yep. the other and they look at you and they just go yeah i don't think so <laughs> yeah we're academic elites you know you and your jargon and your data and your research and it should terrify people beyond the fact and i have no problem saying things like this those of you who don't know my sociopolitical position i'll be clear i don't have a party i don't have a candidate that having been said i like you know facts yeah. Um, this administration has so consistently demonstrated that it is this coming administration is so willing to simply ignore reality, simply say things that are provably, demonstrably, absolutely not true at all. There's no debate about it. There's literally no proof of it. When we now have an education secretary who who was very likely going to be confirmed because it's a Republican controlled Congress, let's be honest. So I'm just going to refer to her as the upcoming education secretary, this Betsy DeVos. She's a billionaire who's never taught a day in her life, has absolutely no credentials in the field, and consistently espouses a position that we know to be the wrong thing to do because the evidence tells us it, and she just says, no, nah, I don't believe you. Are you kidding? Imagine what we would be if we as a school system had to start accepting just like, I don't care if it's true or not, I think so. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine the ramifications of that? Well, Rob and I can because we have to. We're policymakers and we're revolutionaries. We're actively involved in the substance of policy craft for American public education. And now we have to conceive of a federal level system that says truth, facts, reality, data. Nah, they don't pay any attention to that. How can we have a chief academic officer in this country who is patently anti-academic and flaunts and ignores reality and expect improvements and leadership. It's it's mind boggling that we would put a person in a position of leadership who knows nothing about this. And yet, is that not the trend like you just said? Yeah, it absolutely is. So here's my prediction, buddy. And I'm going to let you kind of back up what you think in terms of my prediction, then we'll call <laughs> it a day here. Okay. Um, I think that public education, or we should, let me not call it public education anymore. Let's call it the educational system okay. um, is going corporate where these <laughs> charter schools, private schools, I'm going to start calling them voucher schools are all going to be owned by somebody and the voucher system is going to help take that federal money and they're going to turn around. They're going to be able to give it to this X school that's going to be profitable. Um, and, 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 and we are going to create yet again another institution in America that is that is going to be run for profit, just like our jail system. Think about our jail system. Our jail system recently, about a decade ago, I think, maybe a little longer, went turned into privatization and now companies own jails. What do, what do, what do businesses have to do? They have to keep the, the, the monster running. So do you think America, those people that own these jails want to free the criminals? We know they or don't. Or do we want to make more criminals because more criminals equal more money? 
and there's a lot of evidence out there that talks about some of the silliness of uh, like the marijuana where you get put in jail for that kind of stuff and parole repeat offenders because it's profitable. That's right. I would even go so far as a conspiracy to say there's a dumbing down of America so that public education and, this, and, and the big businesses who are owning all of these things are setting up a perfect storm for them to make all the money between education and jails. Because you know if you're not reading by what, sixth grade is the thing, that's how they start deciding how many jails to own, got it. To, to create. How convenient that we've got the privatization of both of these soon to be. So if we privatize education, what is going to be the marker for these schools to want to get their kids out? Because at the end of the day, the more kids stay in, the more money they make. Unfortunately, greed is ruling America, and that scares the hell out of me. Keith? It's impossible. I'm trying not to be, like, upset. Yeah, right. Because it's – first of all, I, I mean, this is one of those things. Anybody who doesn't believe anything that Rob just said, just go Google it because it's all true. Yeah. We have massive amounts of data that show that private prisons don't work. We have massive amounts of data that suggests that they have incentives to keep people in a prison system. We have massive amounts of historical data, massive amounts of historical evidence inside people who will tell you that was part of their thinking when the war on drugs started, that this whole thing is about keeping certain populations incarcerated and maximizing profit for corporations. We know that's true. You don't like it? Tough. Go read a book. Yeah. The privatization of education will be the end of the republic as we know it. I don't think that America won't exist on a map 50 years from now. I'm not saying that. But I'm talking about a fundamental shift in what it means to be an American. The, the disillusion of the American public school structure, which I don't like the system as it is either. But we're talking about harming children in a substantive and measurable way. And we know why and we know how. We know that things like Alice Miller are going to happen. We know that all the things that Kremen talked about. We've got all of this stuff that shows us what is, that's interesting, shows us what will and will not happen. Tells us what this, and it's the, the, the picture that Rob paints is so bleak. It's impossible for a person like me who, 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 has such, uh, I, I can't help but feel, as I do what I do because I love children. And I've dedicated my life to understanding how to serve them. And we know that the system that Rob just described will not only hurt, it will destroy some children, it will destroy some families, and it will target those children and families that are the most vulnerable and ostracized and marginalized and scapegoated in our society. And it is so the wrong thing to do. It is an intrinsically unloving thing to do. But even if you want to take the emotional part out of it, which for me, as you can see, is very, very difficult because I love what I do and I love children. It, it is so anti-academic, unthoughtful, unthinking and anti-research that it, it almost defies, it almost, I mean, it's, it's baffling. It's mind boggling. But to answer your question directly, do I think that there's the possibility it goes in that direction? I don't think that this administration, because they've got, they've got idiots. <laughs> this Betsy DeVos woman is not, she may be a proponent, but she doesn't know how to do even the thing that she says she wants to do. She's just this lunatic billionaire. But if they start rallying the troops of the people who do want to construct this systemic monster it's possible that they would start to implement it. I don't think the American people will stand for it. I think once they see the actual results, when their local community schools are slammed shut, when they, if they do some of the school choice things they did in even just District 2 in New York and start tearing these things down and shuttering and opening new schools every six months and every year and the kids are being bussed all over kingdom come and shoved from one thing to the next and you see the shiny data but then the next person comes in and says oh this is all crap and before you know it children can't read and the parents know it i think that there will be a, a backlash i think there's going to have to be i don't think america will stand for it but i think they're going to try and I find it, it's desperately sad. It's hard for me not to be visibly upset no, at the idea agree. that what we, what Rob and I fight for daily to our own detriment sometimes, what we have striven for, we are now in an endangered species minority as the corporate oligarchs 
take the reins of power. It's yes. devastating. And and um, I want to put. Um, I hate to put one more negative into there because this has become sort of a. Bleak, this is going to be a negative episode. A I think because a bad here. thing happened in public ed. Right. And we're going to talk about it. Yeah, but um, but I'm going to add one more thing to to what you had said because this is sort of frightening to me as well. You said that that you would hope that that America and that parents would stop and say, whoa, you know, you're, 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 you're crushing education and this isn't working for us. We, we demand it to be the other way. But with a little bit of time, like you said, maybe not in four years, but maybe in eight, 16, whatever the case may be, they slip things by us to the point where we're already so knee deep into it that we yeah. never realized that it happened. Uh, here, here's a prime example of, of, I hate to say it, but like how, how, screwed up some things are um i've got a cell phone in my pocket right now that can do some pretty magical things i mean it can it can do radar it can do gps it can it can find my my family you know i'm talking to you right now we're, we're videotaping this thing you're in virginia i'm in pittsburgh let's let's face it technology is pretty badass right now no uh, but yet you can you can somebody can sit here and tell me that they can't create a simple little sensor to put in every car that would not let it start if it sensed that there was alcohol on somebody's breath. Hmm. Now, why wouldn't we do something that simple? Well, I'll tell you why. Because then all of a sudden, ambulances aren't as needed, Medicare and doctor's bills and emergency rooms aren't as needed, mechanics aren't as needed. I hate to say it, but that's just one more example of us as a society letting something that ridiculous get by and we don't even pay attention to it. And that's what scares me about education because sometimes complacency and us just going through the status quo, they, they, they creep up things on us and we don't even realize it until it's too little too late. And those things scare me. I mean, you can't tell me you, they can't make a little sensor for something like that to, to save lives. It has nothing to do about with saving lives. It has nothing to do with educating kids. I hate to say it, but it seems like every time I have these conversations with myself and others, it all boils down to who's going to make the most money with what, regardless of consequence. Yeah. You know, there's an element in this that Rob raises that I think is critically important. I don't know if we'll split this video in two or not. I know we're getting a little long, but it's important. One of the other things that Rob raises is the idea of choice, right? And that goes back to the school choice thing. I think one of the reasons that Americans reject things that are, um, you know, take the censor as an example. They say, well, if it's, it's my choice, if I want to do the wrong thing or if I want to break the law or if I want to drink and drive, like those are my choices. And even though we know that it's the wrong thing for a person to do, massive statistical increase of the likelihood of death, massive increase of the likelihood of harm to others, massive increase of the likelihood of damage to property, drives up everybody else's cost, is a detriment to society, is bad for your liver, is bad for healthcare costs. I mean, there's a, all of these reasons, but Americans want to say, well, we're founded as a nation of liberty. Okay. I'm, I'm a fierce individualist, and I believe in the right of the sovereign individual to be self-determining. I believe that I define my identity and I make my choices for myself. I'm not a huge fan of massive government. I'm not, my father calls me a liberal. I haven't been a liberal in a very long time, you know. Um, my political, socio-political beliefs are quite disparate from the average Americans um, without getting too into the weeds. But I do value freedom and liberty. I do value those things, and Americans historically reject that. But, but. When parents make decisions that harm their children, we ought to say something, we ought to do something. And we do that, we've talked about this before on this show, we do that in certain sectors of our society. We say that you don't get, parents don't get a say about how the police do the police, right? They come in, if, if there's child protective services get called because you're being a lousy parent, because you're materially harming your child, we have a right to come in there and do something about that as a society. There is a barrier against your imposition of your liberty upon your child's liberty. And I'm a fierce advocate for children and for their liberty. We don't allow uh, families to cram 96,000 people into a flammable matchstick house because it's dangerous for children. Why, why do we insist that parents should have the right to choose things that we know are wrong for their kids, right? And so that's my thing is there has to be a bulwark there has to be something, much as it might be in the national interest, to say, you know what, every automobile has to be 50 miles to the gallon and it has to have a cabin 
uh, uh, alcohol sensor because because of all these reasons we know it's good for everybody. There has to be a bulwark. There has to be a structure of civic law. There has to be a structure of municipal law to say we're going in in this country the way this system of government works. That's a separate conversation if we want to debate that, the merits of that. But in American representative democracy, there has to be a bulwark of laws that say we're not going to allow parents to harm their children in this way. We know school choice doesn't work. We know it doesn't work. So the analogy is it is as irresponsible to say I will immerse my child in a system of learning we know is bad for them as it is to say I don't give a crap about my neighbors and my friends and my family I'm going to drink and drive anyway sure. it is that level of irresponsibility school vouchers and school choice don't work and the data says so and it's bad for society we know it to be the case it's just that people have this idea of liberty well, then you, you're going to have to defend drunk driving to me if you're going to defend school choice. There's your absurd analogy for the day. Yes, and you know what? I, th I think that's a perfect place to end because can't say it any better than that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Americans, make sure you start making some good choices here. Uh, we got we got to really start paying attention to what's going on with education because uh, – if, if, we, if we want a positive future, it's with these kids and it's with them right now. The decisions we're making right now are going to affect us decades beyond. So decades. Uh, it's, it's time to step up and start thinking about some, some, some good choices. Don't be greedy. Don't be, don't be uh, selfish. And start making some decisions that are, that are what's right for your children, not necessarily for you. And uh, let's, 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 let's pray and hope that, that things work out well. And I certainly... Pray and hope that our, our current, our new administration that's going to be coming in here, uh, do great things and then make good choices and, and work and um, do things that are great for children. I'm a little concerned, just like all of us, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to support them because uh, they haven't screwed up at least yet. Yeah. Um, so we're going to uh, give the offer of them our support and hope that they, that they make good decisions based on data, based on fact and uh, based on what we know works and doesn't work. So with that being said, this is uh, Rob Furman and Keith Reeves signing off on the, this latest episode of The Seditionists. Thank you.